I want to welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study, and we are going to be continuing a series on faith. Uh, two weeks ago, we did When Faith Meets Difficulty, and talked about uh, facing difficulties in our life from the standpoint of faith. Last Wednesday night, uh, the subject was When Faith Meets Family, and we dealt with different uh, issues that come up regarding the family and how we approach them by faith. And it's more of a general thing about, about establishing the family based upon the Word of God and the faith that we have in it. Today, I want to do a Bible study that I call When Faith Meets Impossibility. When Faith Meets Impossibility. I want to understand that there, you know, when we deal with things that we consider impossible with God, there's nothing that is impossible. But that doesn't give us license to be ridiculous or begin testing God. Uh, by by calling out uh, crazy things that God has no interest in, He hasn't revealed His will in. God's not going to just do whatever you want Him to just to prove Himself. But if God is in it, if it is the will of God, if it is the plan of God, we need to understand that there is nothing that is impossible with God. And so I want to begin by reading in Matt in Mark chapter number nine, Mark chapter nine and verse uh, seventeen. We'll begin there, Mark 9 and verse number 17. The Bible says, One of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I said, spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered, uh, answereth to him, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he, had, when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said, said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Let's pray. Father, I ask that you would give us wisdom to discern the truth, to rightly divide the Word of God, to go as far as you want us to go, but not to step beyond that in our understanding of this, this thought or this statement. Help us to uh, trust you and follow your will and your plan in faith believing, because without faith it is impossible to please you. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. In this passage of Scripture, we have the Lord Jesus Christ making the statement to the father of the son who was demon-possessed. He said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And the father's response gives us insight into what Jesus is trying to convey by the statement. And he says in verse 24, the man cries out in tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. So when Jesus says, if, thou can, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes, Jesus is definitely talking about things that are within his will and that are simply being hindered by a lack of faith. It's not saying that, it's not trying to promote that a man can just decide what he wants to have happen and that he can just kind of command God. As long as he does it in faith, then God is bound to do it. It is rather talking about things that a lack of faith is hindering, and if we will but uh, trust God, then his will can be accomplished. And so when faith meets uh, impossibility, it's really referring to making sure that we are exercising faith in what God has said. There are some things that God has declared that he will not do, and we are not to suppose that God will override his will just to uh, appease us or humor us. 
there's a, another passage of scripture near uh, to where we were, Mark chapter 10. Just go back one chapter. In Mark chapter 10, and beginning in verse number 23, we have again the state, a similar statement, statement by the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in Mark 10, verse 23, Jesus looked round about and saith unto his, unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth them again and saith unto them, Children, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? When, and Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. And again, understand the situation that Jesus is speaking to. It's not a statement out of context, but rather in context. And the Bible says that he's speaking about a man uh, and saying how hard it is for a rich man to get saved if a rich man trusts in his riches. How difficult it is for him to stop trusting in his riches and trust in God. And so, again, uh, understanding the statement in context, it puts it clearly within the parameter of this is God's will, and it is man's uh, inability to trust, or man's unwillingness to trust, that he's talking about. And so when we're unwilling to trust, many things are impossible. But if God is in it, if it is the will of God, if we will simply trust him, then there is nothing that is that we should consider outside the realm of God's possibility. Another way of saying this, of what I want to try to convey is, that when Jesus says, with God, uh, nothing is impossible, or all things are possible to him that believeth, really what he's saying is, not that I can do anything, or that you can do anything, but that with God, all things are possible. God uh, can do anything. <coughs> and so, with these two thoughts in mind, or these two passages of Scripture in mind, I want to make uh, a few statements here. Before we get to the positive, I want to discuss the negative. First of all, let me mention some things that God says are impossible. <coughs> Excuse me. He says, first of all, it's not possible to get along with everybody. It's, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 18, it says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And so he acknowledges that it's not always possible to get along with every person. The reason for that is, is because it involves the free will of another, another individual. And what we find in the Bible is that God, will, God has granted man a free will. God is not going to impinge upon another man's free will just to answer your prayer or to give you your desires. And so, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, that's simply saying that on your part, you should do everything you can to live peaceably with all men, but you cannot control what other men are going to do. So that's something you cannot do. Just praying that someone else is going to change, will uh, it will uh, bring in the power of God to bear. It will it will bring uh, uh, the influence of the Holy Spirit to bear, but it will not override their free will. It'll never go beyond that. And so we can pray for other people that they might submit to the will of God, but they're going to have to make the ultimate decision to do that. Something else God says is impossible. It's impossible for me to really bear somebody else's problems as, uh, as my own. Galatians 4.15 says, Where is then the, the blessedness she spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. And so he said, if it had been possible for someone to uh, take up the burden of Paul's uh, eyesight, which many believe was the thorn in the flesh that he spoke of, 
that someone else might have been willing to uh, give them, give Paul their eyes, but that's not possible. It's not really possible for us to, we can bear one another's spiritual burdens. We can come alongside them emotionally and help bear their emotional burden. But if someone is uh, crippled, we can't take their, their legs uh, and can't grant them our legs and take their crippledness on, our, on ourselves. We can't really take everything off of everyone else, nor should we. Because if we understand the will of God right, he puts things and allows things in our life for a specific reason as a Christian. And the idea that uh, someone else would just take it on themselves might even undermine the will of God. And so there are many people who deal with physical ailments, whether it be cancer or um, uh, spinal injuries or whatever it might be. And those things, we can encourage one another, we can pray for one another, but we can't take that injury on as our own. So there, that's another thing that is not possible. It's not possible, the Bible says, for God to lie. In Hebrews 6 and verse number 18, the Bible says, that by two immutable or unchangeable truths, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation, who fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope set before us. And so, it is not possible for God to tell you something, and it is not true. It is, it is a falsehood. It is a lie. Some people say, well, the Bible contains lies. And it is true that the Bible sometimes accurately records someone else's lie. When Satan lied to Adam and Eve and said that in the day you eat the fruit of the fr that was forbidden by God, you'll not surely die. He was lying to them. He was parsing words and he was lying to them. And the Bible accurately records the lie of God. But God himself, speaking for himself, cannot lie. It'd be outside the character and the nature of God. Then, I'd say also, it's not possible to please God without faith. Because the Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, without faith, it is not possible for me to please God. That's not a limitation on God. That's a limitation on my ability to please God in any way other than living by faith. If just by my works, just by my effort, just by my desire, I cannot please God. It must be according to faith. And then let me say also from the Bible, it is not possible to be saved without Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Hebrews 10 and verse number 4, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. It goes on to talk about the fact that Christ died once and for all to pay for our sins. So the blood of bulls and goats were not possible to take away our sin, but only Jesus Christ can take away our sin. He can come into your heart and be your Savior and forgive you uh, of your sins. But that's only possible through through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, it is not possible to be drawn away from Christ. The Bible says in verse number 13, excuse me, chapter 13 of the book of Mark, and verse 22, for the, it says that those that are genuinely saved cannot be deceived concerning Christ. It says, for false Christs and false prophets shall arise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce if it were possible, even the elect. And so it's not saying that a saved person can't be deceived about some things. It's saying you can't, you can't deceive a saved person away from Christ, away from the simplicity that is in Christ. Somebody that is genuinely born again uh, cannot be, Satan has no power to seduce him away from Jesus Christ. And then I'd say that goes along with that last one. It's not possible for something to separate us from Christ, for us to lose our salvation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us 
from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So if you're genuinely born again, you love the Lord, there's nothing in this life that can separate you from Christ. And so we can continue to walk with God in faith, in confidence, and in hope, because it is not possible that something's going to come into my life that will separate, it, separate me from the love of Christ and cause him to stop loving me. As the Bible says, Jesus said, all that come to me I will in no wise cast out. It is not possible that something's going to come up that Jesus did not foresee, that he had not anticipated, that would cause him to cast you away. It is not possible. But I did say that the title of the Bible study was When Faith Meets the Impossibility. So let's turn the, the coin around and look at the other side. I want to mention a few things that uh, in the Bible that are mentioned that were done by God that were considered impossible. First of all, Moses drew water from the rock. And by speaking to the rock, he, he, uh, the Bible says that God opened a crack in the rock and water flowed out that was enough water for millions of people and their livestock. Water from the rock, impossible, but not impossible with God. Barren women conceived and gave birth to children. Both Sarah and Elizabeth are recorded in the Bible as having been barren, but God uh, blessed them, he opened their womb, and they conceived. Esther saved the Jews from uh, persecution, from sla being slaughtered and possible extinction, by her act of faith in going before the king. It seemed impossible. It was not permitted and not allowed, but God opened a door for her to, to act in a, in a mediatorial way for the, for the people of, of God. And then I'd say it was also impossible, but God did it, that Jesus was born of a virgin. The Bible says, Behold, I give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And the Bible says that in the New Testament that that did happen, that Mary, a virgin, being, being uh, found with child of the Holy Ghost, she conceived and bare a son, and his name was Jesus. The Bible tells us that, uh, his, that his, uh, his, the name, meaning of his name, Emmanuel, means God with us. Now again, that's something that's not possible with man, but with God, all things are possible. And there are many things from the raising of Lazarus to creation itself that are not possible except with God. And these are the kind of things that the Bible is talking about when it says that if we will walk in faith and trust God, with God, all things are possible and that nothing uh, is too hard for God. Remember what we're talking about. We're not talking about just anything that you just come up with on your own that you can put, kind of put God in a corner by faith and force him to do it. We're talking about things that are at his direction, according to his will, that are being limited by our lack of faith. If we will trust God, we can see those things happen. Uh, if you have a Bible, look with me in John chapter number 11. I'll give you an example here of John chapter number 11. And in John chapter number 11, uh, we'll look beginning in verse number 39. John chapter 11 and verse number 39. The Bible says here, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, which was Lazarus, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? See, this is something that fits into the pattern that we've established. This is something at the direction of God that is simply limited by man's lack of faith in God. That God desired to heal the man's son from his demon possession. And he said, if you believe, you can see all things. All things are possible. This is absolutely within the realm of possibility if you trust the words of God. Here, Jesus is saying to this woman, roll the stone away. And he said, didn't I say, if you'll believe, you'll see 
of the power of God. And so we need to understand that when God says all things are possible if we believe, it's talking about if we put our trust in him. Not if not all things are possible if I believe I want to see it done or if I believe I can do it. No, it's our faith is not in a in an action. Our faith is in a person. So the Bible when it says if we believe, it's not talking about believe in the event. It's talking about believing in the person. If we believe in Christ, to the young father uh, of the child, if you believe in Christ, then all things are possible and your son can be delivered. To Mary, if you believe in Christ, your brother can be raised from the dead. And so uh, we need to understand that what it's talking about is putting faith in a person, and that's the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he said to Mary, if thou, if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. Faith is not in an action. Faith is in a person. It's not whether I can trust God for this event or that event. It's whether I can trust God. If I can trust God, all things are possible to me. My confidence in the Lord uh, should be unwavering because without faith, it's impossible to please him. And the Bible says that we are to ask in faith, nothing wavering. But the, the faith is not in the occurrence of the event. The faith is in the person of God who's able to do all things. We need to understand that when we come to God, at the end of our ability, we are at the beginning of God's ability. When I come to the end of my strength, I am at the beginning of God's strength. That's exactly what the Apostle Paul found out when he prayed uh, for the thorn in the flesh to be removed from him. He came to the realization because God revealed to him, he said, my grace is sufficient for thee. And the apostle Paul responded by saying, when I am weak, then am I strong. His weakness was the display case for the, the power of God. When we are at the end of our strength, we are at the beginning of God's strength. When we reach the end of what we can do, we are at the beginning of what God can do. And let me say also, we need to let God determine what is or is not possible. What I mean by that is, when God gives us a direction, we need to trust God and go that direction. This is not about me setting my own plan for my life, inviting God along, and then ordering God to do what our bidding is, because he said, if we'll believe, he'll, we'll see it. No, this is God giving the commands. God giving the direction, and we must exercise faith to go forward in faith, believing and trusting in God. So we need to let God decide what is or is not possible. If he says it's not possible that he should lie, then that's not possible. But when our faith meets what looks impossible to us, when we are uh, moving at the direction of God, moving at his command, we can trust that God can make a way, and with God, this can be possible if I can trust him. So we need to let God determine what is or is not possible. There's uh, a line of understanding when we deal with truth like this, and it's not saying that it has to be qualified, it has to be understood, that when God speaks Whatever he's commanded us to do, it is possible if we will but believe and trust him. He calls upon us to act in faith at the direction of God when what's before us looks impossible, yet with God it is possible. Someone penned down this helpful little uh, poem that, that I've used over my, over my ministry and over my Christian life. I'd like to read it to you right now. It's about faith versus doubt. It simply goes like this. Doubt sees the obstacles. Faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night while faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take a step while faith soars on high. Doubt questions who believes. Faith answers I. If we will walk in faith, we can meet that which seems impossible. If we're moving at the direction of God, with God, all things are possible. Water from a rock, if God directs it, God can do it. Uh, trusting him for our provision, if God has commanded it, if God has promised it, 
he can do it. With man, it seems impossible. With God, it is possible if we will trust God in faith. And remember, our faith is not in an action. Our faith is not in, in our purpose. Our faith is in the person of God, that we, with God, all things are possible. Thank you for joining me for this continued series on faith in the Christian life. When faith meets life is what we're calling it. And so I hope that when you face, when you're following God and you face what seems impossible, that you'll go forward in faith, um, as many did in the Bible, as those that faced the walls of Jericho, uh, obeyed God, and the impossibility of taking the city of Jericho was made possible by God. Uh, when uh, armies were told to whittle down to just a few hundred and, and encompass an enemy and then blow trumpets and break, uh, and break uh, pitchers uh, covering uh, lamps, uh, when they obeyed that, uh, then they saw God work. God provided because where God guides, God provides. And so when faith meets impossibility, and I hope that our lives will be a mark, uh, earmarked by faith in God and trusting what God has said that he will do. Hope you'll join us next Wednesday as we continue the series, When Faith Meets Life.